My name is Marty Cohn from the University of Florida. Our lab studies the development and evolution of appendages, including limbs and external genitalia. Over the past 10 years, there's been considerable progress in our understanding of external genital development, at least in the mouse. And it's now become possible to apply that information to evolutionary problems. One of the most puzzling events in evolution is the reduction and loss of the phallus in birds. Evolution comes down to reproductive fitness, so it's remarkable that a group of animals would eliminate a structure that's so important for reproduction. All birds reproduce by internal fertilization, but 97% of them, that's over 10,000 species, lack a phallus that's capable of intromission. So if one looks at this phylogenetically, the most basal group of birds, ostriches, emus, kiwis, they have a really pronounced phallus. Another group of birds called the anseriforms, waterfowl, ducks, geese, and so on, they also have pronounced phalluses. But in their sister group, the galliforms, the clay that includes landfowl, chickens, quail, turkeys, etc., the phallus is reduced or even completely absent. So after galliforms diverged from the lineage leading to anseriforms, the penis was reduced or lost. At a developmental level, very little is known about the molecular mechanisms of external genital development. In this study, we investigated the developmental basis of phallus reduction in birds. In other words, how did the chicken lose its penis? Two graduate students in my lab, Anna Herrera and Claire Periton, and an undergrad researcher, Simone Schuster, they undertook a comparative study of bird external genital development, selecting five different species from three clades. So we first began our study by looking at the external genital development of two different birds. One was in the galliform clade chickens and the other in the anseriform clade ducks. And what we saw was that during the early stages of development, the genital tubercles initiate in much the same way. But in chickens, later on during their development, they begin to arrest and then regress. And then later, in the later stages of development, they are left with a small genital tubercle. Whereas in ducks, the tubercle continues to grow and during late stages, um, it coils. And in fact, in some adult species of duck, the phallus can even exceed the length of its entire body. To understand why outgrowth arrests in chick genital tubercles, we began to systematically dissect in birds the gene network that's known to control genital development in mice. And to our surprise, each of the genes that we examined showed similar patterns of expression in chickens and ducks. In fact, when we did cell proliferation studies, we found that the cell proliferation rates are also very much the same. This led us to believe that it's not a cell proliferation issue, but rather a cell death issue. So to test this, we compared the patterns of programmed cell death in chick and duck embryos. And we found that chicks undergo a late wave of cell death in the distal region of the genital tubercle. Duck genitalia, on the other hand, have very low levels of cell death. If this distal region of cell death that we found in chickens and in quails is a feature that evolved specifically in that group of birds, then the low level of cell death that we saw in ducks and in geese should be the primitive condition. To see if this is a primitive condition, we wanted to look at a more basal bird, um, an emu, and then we wanted to look outside of the birds at an alligator, which is part of the crocodilians. And what we found is that in all the species that we compared, only the galliform group had this distal domain. So these results suggest that galliform birds evolved this new late phase of cell death in the genitalia after they diverged from other birds. Chickens have a domain of BMP4 expression and activation of target genes distally or at the tip that's not seen in ducks. So this distal expression is found precisely in the region where cell death occurs to determine whether basal birds with well-developed phalluses also lack the distal domain of BMP4, we went back to emus and we found that just like ducks, emu genital tubercles lack the distal domain of expression, but they have the proximal domain. So what does this mean? The identification of the distal BMP expression and programmed cell death in chicks, but not in birds with well-developed phalluses, suggested that acquisition of this new domain of BMP4 expression could be a molecular explanation for the evolutionary reduction of the phallus, but we really needed to perform functional tests to determine causality. We first wanted to test the effects of blocking BMP signaling by using a antagonist of BMP signaling, Noggin. By applying Noggin, we were able to rescue cell survival and inhibit the regression that we see. 
So BMP signaling is necessary for that wave of cell death that induces regression of the chick genital tubercle. So these results suggest that after the divergence of the anseriform and the galliform lineages, galliforms evolved this new domain of BMP4 expression at the distal tip of the genital tubercle. And this may have been responsible for the wave of cell death that induces regression of the phallus in that lineage.